Arlene Phillips, OBE. <laughs> Arlene obviously is uh, well known as a, as a writer, as a dancer, oh, and also as a choreographer. In uh, the late 70s, she made that point to me, late 70s, she founded Hot Gossip. <laughs> Uh, in the uh, mid-80s, she um, choreographed Duran Duran in Wild Boys, the video, which was... Do you remember that? Wasn't that fantastic? Um, has since choreographed numerous West End shows, has to leave here at 5 to 3 to go and help out uh, with Andrew Lloyd Webber on his Wizard of Oz show, um, and of course is well-known, no, famous, come on, for being on Strictly Come Dancing and famous for leaving Strictly Come Dancing, um, which no doubt we'll discuss in a minute. The subject of uh, our, our chat, yes. it's going to be a chat, it's Arlene. Chat. The, the subject of our chat is, is television any good for the arts? Does television do good art, I think, is the, uh, the big question. And we might be coming to you um, during the conversation, but the first thing to ask you, Arlene, is does television do good art? Well, I think television is actually doing some fantastic art at the moment. I was riveted by Anne Berenford's film of One Man Walking, which to me is art, it's contemporary art. It's, it's using the dance of the day uh, and, and dance as a message. And, and I, when I think back to the way that locking and popping and everything was done in the 70s, to what it's become now, an art form, I just think it's phenomenal. So I think television does do good art. I think, you know, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, as you speak of him, um, his uh, programme on his passion for the pre-Raphaelites was about art, but it was spoken with such feeling and from the heart, I think it reached out to a lot of people. Um, however, I do think television should be doing more art and whatever we call art well, what, do you, um, what do you call art? I, you know what I, what I what I truly call art is something that when I was growing up was the reserves of the intellectuals and the middle classes and you know art as in um, wonderful artists art as in classical dance art was something that I aspired to but in my school I was the odd one out so I, I saw it as something that one had to step into. And if you came from a working class family and you came from someone that didn't have any money, it was a big step to get into the arts. I sat uh, in the gods at the Palace Theatre watching uh, what, what was then festival ballet. Um, uh, and, but I really was a sort of an odd one out. Now, I think art is much, much wider and people want to embrace it. You take the Hockney exhibition, um, and not only was the Hock is the Hockney exhibition extraordinary, but it has that wonderful piece that, uh, of the dancers in your studio doing tap and ballet. Now, that in itself is art, but it's art for everyone. It's art for the masses. And I think that, I think that, that giant step that I used to take when I was small has got smaller and smaller and smaller. You, you mentioned the Hockney exhibition and, and a yeah, huge show. Yeah. And of course, the Leonardo and the Freud will be a huge show. And interestingly, at the end of last year, the, the Turner Prize went up to the Baltic and it did an enormously good trade. Hmm. And yet, put the Turner Prize on television and it dies on its ass. Ah, but dies on its ass is how television is done. What, what makes television appeal to people? Where do you go from an artsy program that appears to only be about art and speaks to people that they know can understand art, you, is, is that as that opposed the, to reaching out, finding, finding the people who can talk about art with a passion, not only with an intellect, but with a passion and the words that reach a lot of people. I mean, you take a letter from a lawyer and most people cannot understand it. And yet that's why lawyers are sort of held in such high res great respect is because they can talk in a language that few people understand. Now, few people are the masses and the language that brings art to them, even the, the Turner Prize, whatever it may be, has to be spoken in a language that everyone can understand and it's made to feel that everybody belongs. So do you think too many arts programmes are pitched 
too high or for, for, for too narrow an audience? I wouldn't say too many, but I would say quite a number of them are, or shown at times when people aren't actually watching television. You have to be a specialist searching through your radio times to find what you want um, on a channel that you want. And I think it's important that um, all, of the, all of the arts are crossing. I know that Channel 4 is doing a great deal. Um, recently, uh, BBC4 did the programme on the musicals. I think those, they need to be on our main channels. We need to stop sort of keep it discerning that the arts will be, well, maybe on BBC2, but no, it really should be BBC4. Um, ITV, fine, if it's 10.30 on a Sunday night. Reach out to people. I believe it's what people want. But, you know, we've both talked a bit about Strictly in the past, yes. you've talked much more about it than yeah. I have, but I wrote an article about, I don't know, three or four years ago. Yeah, for 2008. The... Was it? Yeah. Yeah, fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 2008, yeah. Uh, where, where I argued that Strictly Come Dancing was a new form of arts programming because it, it had driven the amount of people going to places like Saddles Wells and the Royal Opera House right up there. You'd engage people in the idea of dance. It was no longer seen as a fringe or silly thing or slightly camp thing. It's something that everybody get, could get involved with. And the figures for dance as an art form have risen hugely since Strictly came around. I got a lot, a lot of criticism for that article from people within the arts, maybe even one or two in the room, um, to say that isn't an arts programme. What's your view? Um, I actually think of Strictly Come Dancing as entertainment, and I will tell you why, because it's based on ballroom and Latin. Now, ballroom and Latin have always wanted to uh, be seen as an Olympic sport. Therefore, it is considered to be something let's say, a dance, but less of an arts form. And they see themselves um, as really ready to gear up to the Olympics rather than pure uh, artistic dance. However, it did but break how, down. How, how, how does it Go differ? On. How does it differ? How does it differ? Yeah. I think that... I think that I mean, it, it, it doesn't it, it, it's differ. It's, using, it it's using, your using your body to express it, yourself, to absolutely blah, blah, blah. And I'll tell you why and how it differs. Uh, and it is about body. It's, it's taking shows, and I, I'm going to refer once again to this film, One Man Walking, yeah. where street dance, as it was, I mean, I was doing a programme uh, called Strictly Dance Fever about, I can't remember how many years ago, where it was all about street dance. And everyone came along to audition wearing white, mostly with gaps around the stomach and too much flesh, flat trainers, bleached hair. That was street dance. It's only because you get people like Henrik and different people turning dance into an art form. Mm. And as yet, ballroom and Latin, there have been many, many shows and there have been many, many uses of ballroom and Latin, but it hasn't yet taken that step into an art form because it isn't and has rarely been used for storytelling. And I think when you think of classical dance or you think of contemporary dance, yes, there are pieces that are just standalone, but it's part of storytelling. Now, with Midnight Tango that I've recently produced with Vincent and Flavia, there is a story and it is trying to take dance and turn it into an art form but it just splashing a minute and a half of dance a minute and a half of dance a minute and a half of dance is not yet in itself an art form so the issue here i think is yeah. what is the difference between arts and entertainment yes so my argument with this strictly article was it was driving lots of people to go and go and try dance in the theatre who wouldn't have necessarily done so before, who became more confident with that art form. Yes. But what is the difference for people in television, for viewers? Is there a difference between arts and entertainment? Yes, I believe there's a big difference Beyond in Beyond just dance. Yeah, I, it, it, there is a big difference in arts and entertainment. Um, entertainment on every level is usually something that is, is instant gratification. You see it, it's gone. You see it, it's gone. You see it, it's gone. Art is something that you have to engage with for a longer period of time than if you don't like it. That minute and a half's gone and you walk away from it. And I think, I think one of the interesting things on So You Think You Can Dance, another programme I did for the BBC, sadly cancelled, because I think in itself it was groundbreaking 
because it started to bring in art to an entertainment format. And that was, there were many phenomenal choreographers, but within that minute and a half, as opposed to in Strictly, where you do a minute and a half of you just dance mm. to music that often doesn't belong to the dance you're doing at all, it's populist music. On So You Think You Can Dance, there was a wonderful piece that Raphael Bonacella came to do that in a minute and a half had the most engaging story. It was heartbreaking. And many, many people suddenly realised and took to their hearts contemporary dance and that form of dance. And there were others. Matthew Bourne did a piece from Swan Lake, which although thousands upon thousands of people have seen it, it hadn't yet reached the instant eight million on one program that suddenly saw um, the signets from Swan Lake. And so I think So You Think You Can Dance was definitely the beginnings of crossing art and entertainment. But it has, it but has it, but to it got, be but more got, than but it got, just But it got cancelled, right? It has, sadly has been cancelled, yes. Yeah. And it, in, in, Why? Um, viewing figures. We were on quite early, I guess, you know. I mean, that's a question, you know. You're talking about art and entertainment. Where do they cross? And should the BBC actually be going constantly for viewing figures. They, you know, the BBC, should it have the same targets set as other television programmes that aren't funded? OK, let's see. Who thinks, <laughs> hands up, who thinks the BBC shouldn't chase ratings? OK, and who thinks the BBC should chase ratings? <laughs> Is that Mark Bell at the back there? Um, OK, well, there you go. So the BBC yeah. shouldn't trace, chase ratings, but then what happens... OK, yeah. that's the general feeling. Yes. And I think there's a lot of sympathy for that throughout the media and, and people who watch telly. Yes. But Friday night, Saturday night, BBC One. If you're the uh, controller of BBC One, Danny Cohen, yeah. and you put a show on at 7 o'clock in the evening, which is your show... Strictly, I can do art or whatever it might be. Yes. And it gets 200,000 viewers. And ITV have got something a little bit more commercial, say. Yeah. And it does 10 million. You're going to get every saying, but why are we paying a licence fee for television that no nobody watches? Yes. Uh, you know what? I, I, I absolutely, you know, can't, can't knock that. You, you know, you do have to get viewers watching programmes. You do have to draw the audience to watch your programmes. But how do you do that? You, you, need, you need not just your programme, you need the media involved. But people have to be brave. I mean, you know, I, I remember I watched Sherlock. Now, I thought that was one of the most riveting programmes that's been on television today. Now, who knew that something like that could bring the vast audience to it? People, the BBC, ITV, I don't think anybody knows what will bring an audience to it and why. If we did, everybody would have that magic potion in the glass and they would just pour it out whenever they wanted. Um, I think the media have a lot to do with it. I think the media can quite frankly possibly make or break a programme. I think they, they can talk about it. They can, they can make people feel that if they don't watch something, they're not part of a club. And I, I often sort of looked at something in a newspaper. It's not necessarily a review. It can be an article about something. And I go, oh, I've missed that. I have to see it. And you're drawn to it. And I think, you know, hand in hand, the media and, and the broadcasters must try new things, must try to develop um, programs. Of course, everybody's got to go for things, but I don't think anybody ever knows what will bring ratings or why ratings rocket and why they disappear. It's that unknown thing, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, Arlene, can you give me an example of television doing bad art? Bad art. Oh, goodness. Bad art, well... Aye, a rubbish television programme covering the arts. A rubbish... Well, I can't think of a rubbish television programme covering the arts. 
However, I do think there's a way to have an entertaining way of covering the arts. Now, I would love to do the one show for art and dance. The one show attracts a lot of people. There is so much going on all over the UK that people don't know about. There are the most fascinating dance communities. There's a, a Brazilian form of dance called Zouk um, that, that people are living and breathing. There are hundreds and thousands of people all over the country doing Zumba and Salsa. And there are many, many forms of dance and art that people don't know are going on, where to find it, talking about it, making it entertain, entertaining, letting people know a vast audience, not only has Sadler's Wells got the most amazing programming, but many of those pieces go out and they need to reach and be known about to everybody, not just the people who are searching for the arts, who are looking in the newspaper to find it, because it's proved by giving this to people they love it. They love art as entertainment. And I think we can build art into entertainment. Let me ask you then a tricky question. Go on, trick me. It is quite tricky. Yeah. How would you get a big audience to watch the Turner Prize? Oh, I, I, would, I would absolutely find the most popular, um, uh, you know, uh, the Brian Cox of the art world. I, that, that's, you know, it's, well, you all just finding, get Brian Cox to do it. Well, oh, you know, Brian yeah. Cox to do it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Find, find people who just by the, the, by, um, the way that they speak, the way they, they can express their passion. And it may come, as you say, from a different... I mean, I wouldn't put Jeremy Clarkson there to do it, but... Why not? You know, Why not? Why not? Maybe that's well, exactly what it needs. Well, maybe. <laughs> but there are people who are interesting and entertaining and and they should be they, they should cross platform them it doesn't mean somebody that is knowledgeable about the arts and can sp and spout every fact would necessarily make the most entertaining um person to host the program but goodness knows there are so many fascinating and riveting people give it to them and turn that into Entertainment. Talking of fascinating and riveting people, Arlene, yes. of which you are one. Well, thank and, you. And you were saying quite clearly, I think, to all of us that you think for arts to make a big impression on television, that it's really about the presenter, to bringing an audience yes. with them. Yeah. Do you think, within the arts coverage on television, that the breadth and type of presenters is correct? Do you think, Arlene, for example, there are enough mature women on the box. Ooh. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Um, uh, you, you know what? I, I, th this, this issue of mature women, I think, personally, um, starts in the home. And if you, at the moment, I think we are in 2012, 2011, in awe of clever children children that can write, that can sing, that can do things that, you know, an, a, 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 as an adult would. Forgetting that clever children, eventually the gap, you know, closes and they're not children anymore. And I think, do we even respect older people? We are not a nation that, that actually really embraces the old. The old, as we look at television and television news, are outcast. And it has to start in the home. It has to start in every family and, and start to love and embrace people as they get older, not think that every wrinkle means they're outcast. And it has to start so that as young people are growing up and young people come into television or wherever they are, they are looking out and embracing older people and, and what they can bring and the insight. And at the moment, I think it's everywhere. It's just like, you know, older people are being sort of slightly crushed. And I don't think it's particularly just on television. I don't particularly think it's just with women. I just think we are in, at the moment, um, a situation where youth is, is admired beyond almost any time before. So you think that if 
some personalities who are on television who were more mature were presenting the arts, that would be a good thing. I think, it, I think we should have a complete mix. I think there are, there are many young and fascinating people and there are great, great young presenters on television. But I think there should be a mix. I think there should be a real mix on every programme of young and old. I think it makes it interesting. I don't think there should be programmes that are particularly led by, uh, you know, a mature team. Um, I think a mix is great. The other thing, I suppose, about arts and television, which is increasingly becoming an issue, is if you've got something which is quite fringe or quite difficult mm -hmm. or avant-garde, which is going to get a small audience, why not just put it out digitally? Why not just put it on YouTube? What, what, what's the role of television within all that? Well, I think the, I think the role of television has to, has to know that everything will be seen eventually digitally, but it's, there's no question there are young people who only watch television via a computer and, watch and constantly use it. It hasn't as yet reached, which is why sometimes when they have television award programmes, that this obscure programme will we'll actually win an award. I suppose, and that's I suppose simply I'm, because mm. people are voting online. But why not do the show the BBC cancelled? Why not do that online? I think that the costs at the moment of doing something online, that, that was a very expensive show. We, they were bringing choreographers, extraordinary choreographers in, and dancers, and, and artists in. Um, you could not yet put that money to do something online and create it for online unless you get su uh, support of some huge financier. It, it just isn't possible. It isn't, I don't think it's possible at all as yet. And as media, you know, in a way, doesn't, uh, it proliferates, which makes finding audiences harder. You know, TV audiences even now are half yeah. what they were yeah. a few years ago. What do you think the prognosis for arts on television are? Because it is an area which does struggle to get an audience. It's not just like motor racing or sport no. or whatever. How do, you see, how do you see that sort of that tension um, evolving? I, I think that all television companies will find themselves presenting art, A, because it's what people want, and B, because they have a duty to it. They really do. They have a duty to bringing to people more than just cheap entertainment. And I have to say, I've been asked to do something, and I don't even know what, uh, whether I will or not, but I have to say, I was asked to do something by Channel 5, and I'm not a big Channel 5 watcher, and this is coming up, that I was really quite surprised, because it is... It is to, Go on, you're intrigued, with, darling. No, what is it? It is to do with theatre. Right. Um, and... I sort of took me aback when I first of all I sort of looked at what it was and I was thinking my goodness well that that's really interesting and I do think that television companies will look at the various art forms including theatre and and start embracing them and was this, even was this more, a, a more reality more. sort of idea um it, no it's, it's 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 a sort of a mix it is a slight reality idea, but everything, everything has to move on. I mean, I love at the moment that English National Ballet are creating a, um, a, a ballet with Flawless, mm -hmm. the, the, the um, street, street dance, dance. Yeah. and bringing that kind of street entertainment and the pure art of classical dance together it's trying to look and engage and embrace using new ideas. And I think that as dance and the arts is all about new ideas, mm. television will have to embrace it. People will want it more and more. And I know for a fact that when Strictly Come Dancing began on television, that dance shoe companies were going out of business. They had high rents, they were in Covent Garden. They, they couldn't any longer exist. Now, you can't make, they can't make dance shoes fast enough, they've expanded, they've expanded into dancewear, dance clothes. So that's widened. That's definitely where art and industry and entertainment have all collided. And although it isn't the most artistic program in the world, it is about dance. And, you know, that's more of that, more of the coming together then I think the arts are going to be 
all right, and I pray they're going to be all right. So before we finish, I want to ask the audience, hands up if you think TV does good art. And hands up for people who think TV does not do good art. So marginally less. Yeah. Arlene Phillips, audience, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.